Mark chapter 7. Then came together unto him the Pharisees, and the Pharisees were the strict. I mean, they were religiously right. I didn't say godly right. They were religiously right. They were the up of the up ups. They believe in the angels. They believe in the resurrection. They just didn't believe in God. A certain of the scribes, those are in charge of the writings, those are in charge of the scrolls, which came from Jerusalem. So they are centered where the temple, where the capital of the people were. And when they saw some of the disciples eat bread, with defiled, they said uh, that it is said unwashed hands. They found fault. Now there was another time the disciples were in the field and they were rubbing the wheat in their hands and eating. You know how dare you do work on the Sabbath? Now they come up and they're, they're eating, and they notice or took notice that they use unwashed hands. So do many people today. My grandma was like that. You know, you couldn't come to the table unless you had your hands washed. And there's a thing to washing hands, but for the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, often, all the time, eat not, holding the traditions of the elders. So, this comes to be, does the Bible play out? Is the Bible real? Well, a few years ago, we had an event in the world that was called COVID-19. And it was a thing that you had to wash your hands. And you sing a little song, rub my hands to the right, rub my hands to the left while you're washing your hands. Make it cute little time. And they're, you know, all over the place. You have to wash your hands. You have to wash it so many times. And if you didn't wash your hands, you'll see signs in restaurants and employees at the grocery store. You can't return back to work unless you wash your hands. I mean, I... I was doing stocking of uh, merchandise in the shelf. I mean, if I washed my hands or not. We've come all the way back to, to this thing of hand washing. It must be, it has to be. Holding the tradition of the elders. Now, there was a washing in the law. There were certain things that... Uh, with the uh, the utensils in, in the temple, certain ones could be washed, certain ones you had to destroy if they touched something, or they, and the priest would have to wash. There was a brazen altar for the washing. But that was inside the temple. That was inside the, the tabernacle. That was not out among the people. And they say you wash your hands off, but all the time you do that. Oh, you got to wash your hands. You got to do that. You got to wash your hands. And you're not going to have no meal unless you wash your hands off. Often. Well, that went through with COVID-19. Holding tradition of the elders. All right, tradition. This is a rule. This is set. This is... Of the elders of Israel, these are the up the up up. These are the, the important people. And when they came from the market, you know, the, and it was it wasn't like the grocery stores. It, it, they were market. They were on the street. They had little booths. One guy had fruit. One guy had meat. One guy had baskets. I mean, whatever it was. Except they wash again. Here we are now. You go down to the market. You go down. I mean, it pictures the flea market. You go down there, now you got to wash your hands. Often. They eat none. So verse 3, except you wash your hands oft, you eat not. Except when you come from the market, you wash your hands. You don't eat. And many other things there be. So there were other traditions of the elders 
that was proclaimed, that was done, that was not necessary to law. And I was going to write it down. I don't see it. Just take a look here at my notes. I didn't write it down. All right, on this aspect here, something I wanted to do is Jesus said, those are heavy laden, you burdened. Paraphrasing. He says, come on to me, I'll give you a rest. This is exactly what he's talking about. He's saying, in that, and I know it's taking other ways and all that, but he's taken again under the law, no church, no Christians. Unless you wash your hands, wash your, wash your hands off, as long as you wash your hands, you know, you come to the marketplace. Unless you junifect yourself, unless, you know, you cross your right hand, cross your left hand. Unless you do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that, do this, don't do this, that, do the traditions. Jesus shows up on the scene. Listen, are you heavy laden? If you got all this stuff, they and they're, they're put, and they'll tell you even the Pharisees don't do. And this is one of those cases. And I would assume that the way these people are, they would have people. Now, if you remember John chapter 4, there's the marriage in Cana. And there were pots there. They were called washing pots. And they had the servants that dealt with those pots. What was that? To wash. You couldn't go into that wedding unless those servants washed you. Washed you. And then we, they, hey, that guy over there, which one of you washed him? Well, I did, sir. Did you get the back of the hands? How far did you go up on the hand? Did you wash part of the arm? We entered one second to the Sabbath. How dare you do that? They were heavy laden the people with heavy rules and regulations that was not in the law. You take America. We've, we are overloaded with laws and regulations. We have a law in Florida right now, new, that if your vehicle has excessive sound music coming out of your car, it's illegal in Florida. Okay, that sounds good, because I don't want to hear that junk that comes out of the radio. I don't want to hear the, the other day we, we had the bike, and we were sitting around, and just the filthy language that coming off that, that's illegal in Florida. But we don't have enough cops to catch everybody that goes through the red light. We don't have every, enough cops to catch the speeders. We don't have enough cops where you call 911. And it takes forever for them to. I mean, you're making these loot, raw, loot, these laws and regulations. You ain't got the, the the authority of the people to back it up. I mean, if you want to have a yard sale, you got to go downtown. You got to pay for a license. You got you want to go fishing, you got to pay for a salt water license. And you got to pay for a fresh water license. If you want to build a deck, you got to pay for this. You got to get this permit. You got to have somebody come and do this. And you you know you want to get your car, you got to pay all this money to get your car registered. You got to pay for the play. You got to pay for the insurance. You you have to have you know the certain taxes for the door you want to fix your house. And you can't do this, and you can't do that, and you know you can't re re change your whole yard if you got a tree there that it's important to the environment you can't build this kind of thing because there are frogs over here and they're endangered frogs and they could be the frogs that became the human beings that we are today and we, you can't do that because the mayor lives on that street and you can't do this because we say you can't do that and if you want to do this you got to make sure you come to us and get the permission or you know if we say yes you can do it we say no you can never do it and you get to, to the highest 
Supreme Court of the land. And once the Supreme Court said that males are, are females and females are males, and, and we and we don't know what we're talking about because our heads are half blown away, and this is the law of the land. And we, if you say you got religious principles and you're not going to bake a cake for this group of people, when we tell you you have to bake this cake, perfectly fine. You must do it or go out of business. That's what's going on now. See, you got to realize America today is in the time of Jesus, of the land of Israel. It's the time of Jeremiah in the land of Israel. It's godless. And yet it's ruleful, and I mean ruleful is there, there's plenty of rules, there's plenty of regulations. You got to go get a dog license. Not my neighbors. Well, what are you going to do? Well, okay, dogs run loose. I call, I call animal control. We got two animal control officers. One's on a medical leave and the other one's on uh, disability leave. There's rules. There's, there's, there's regulations. Do's and don'ts. One of them has to be washing. Now, that's perfectly fine to wash it. I don't spend all day washing my hands. But when COVID was up of his mask, everybody had to. And you, you, you know what I think of COVID was? I think COVID was to make a big money. I think the people who make the mask came up with COVID. I think the people who came up with the shots, the charge for the shot, you won't believe how many shots are being charged for your shirt. I believe they did that. I believe the people for the hand sanitizer, I believe they were the people doing it. You can't go anywhere today without seeing a hand sanitizer. And talk about the churches. Everywhere. Big gallons of hand sanitizer. And they're more worried, did, did you sanitize your hands? Or did you confess your sins to Jesus? And the churches today, they will have people come in, not only clean the church, but we sanitize the church. We went out and bought this air thing, and it purifies the whole building against COVID-19. Wait a minute, COVID-19 is a brand new disease, right? Yes. Oh, oh, you came up with this air purifier just now to do an unknown disease. Something screwy. You mean to tell me that little device? Eh? Rules and regulations. Six feet apart. So there's nothing new when you're talking about this hand wash as, as you know, look around what you... What you can be told and what you can't be told in America. When they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be, which they have received to hold. That means you honor. You don't fight. You don't rebel. Unless you're... I mean... You cannot in America write bad checks. And I know a couple of people have been to jail. And, you know, they've been, they're, they're out of jail. They did their time. But they wrote bad checks. Okay? That's the law. You get caught, you go to jail. That's the law. Every single day, your government writes bad checks that America can't afford. How come they're not in jail? Are you telling me every Republican, Democrat, every one of those, Paul, they're squeaky queen? <laughs> Look at the Pharisees. We got three branches of government. Well, there was the Pharisees, there was the Sadducees, and there were the scribes. We've come a long way backwards into the Bible. As washing of cups, pots, brazen vessels, and tables. All right, that's in the law. It was. But that was not for the people outside the work of the temple. 
And I guarantee you, I've heard things where they just go to extreme to make sure things are clean. But you realize ever since COVID-19, the cleaning tables, cleaning the chairs, cleaning of this, cleaning of that, washing, you realize we've had a lot more just today, it's sad to say, and praying for the thing. Uh, we call it a parking garage collapse in New York. Tornadoes down south. God will come up with more judgments than what you care about. But there it is. I mean, cups, hands, pots. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Jesus, why walk not thy disciples according to tradition of the other? All right. See, it's a tradition. Now, they had just admitted. They said the traditions of the elders, not of God. We made up these laws. Talking to God. All the laws that there is by God. This one they're picking on. They tell God, Jesus. I believe Jesus is God. They tell him, hey, we got this problem. We got this tradition of the hand washing. They didn't wash it. This is our tradition. Never mind what God. You know, there is nothing in the law. There is nothing that Paul writes to the Christian. That you have to wash your hands before you eat your meal. Now, grandma, mom may have a tradition. And if grandma and mom say, wash your hand, you better wash your hand because they're your parents, they're your elders. We're looking at a ceremonial religious tradition set by the people of the elders, the Pharisees. I guarantee there were harsh punishments if you didn't. I mean, in most cases, the harshest pun punishment is if your mom or your grandma saw your hands still filthy at the table, and they tell you, get your butt up, get over there and wash you. And you come back to the table, and they look. <laughs> but eat bread with unwashed hands. I don't know how filthy they could have got. He answered and said unto Jesus, red letter, here we go. Now, watch how he rebukes them. Well, has Elias, that's Elijah, Greek, you just learned Greek today. All Greek did was change a couple letters. That's all it did. Prophesied unto you hypocrites. <laughs> I bet you that went well. As it is written. All right. Tradition of elders is not written. All right. Let me quote to you what the Bible said to the scribes, to the ones that to handle the law. This people honoreth me with their lips, but their hearts far from me. You say you're godly. You say you honor Jehovah. You say it's right, but your heart ain't so. Now he did not tell he did not turn to the disciples and say, everybody get in the washroom, wash your hands. He turned to the religious people and said, You're a hypocrite. Your mouth speaks, but your heart. That's a lot of people in the churches today. That's a lot of your preachers. That's a lot of your teachers. That's a lot of people sitting in the pews. One of the cases would be when they die and they end up in hell. Can you imagine a pastor of your church or any church, and he, and he dies? He was a wonderful great man. Oh, he built this church, blah, blah, blah. And in hell, he spends all eternity. His lips, but not his heart. Oh, he looks religious Sunday morning. Monday through Saturday, he lives like the devil. Maybe it takes a little intermission on midweek service, but that's what these people were. 
How be it in vain, worthless, do they worship me? That's kind of funny because when Isaiah said the, the people honor me with their lips, it's God speaking. Through Isaiah, inspiration, Jesus says, in vain do you worship me, God. Mr. Jehovah Witness. Teaching for doctrines. Doctrine is a teaching. That's all the word doctrine means. It means teach. The commandments of man, not God. And they said, the tradition of the elders. That's exactly what Jesus has said. And we're going to get to the point is Jesus is going to tell us that these people, you had the tradition, you had the law and commandment statutes of God through Moses. And then you got the traditions of the elders, the traditions of men. There's two classes. One is of God and one is just lips. And they're teaching the ones of man, the commandments of men, rather than God. What is a what would be in the religious realm of the church? What would be a commandments of men? Go to church twice a year, and on Easter get yourself a new dress and a new hat. Put little eggs out so children can. We're going to have a happy birthday birthday party for Jesus on December 25th. And if you don't vote, you, 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 you're you scum. You have no work. You can't complain if you don't vote. No, no, my thing is, is you can't complain if you don't pay taxes. You don't have to vote to complain. You pay taxes, you got the right. Commandments of men is, is what the man teaches. You got the Southern Baptist, you got the Independent Baptist, you got the Fundamental ba Baptist, you got the Hard Shell Baptist, you got the Baptist of Salt Water, Baptist of the River Water, the Baptist of the Ocean Water, the Baptist of the, the, the Tap Water. You got the Baptist of NIV, Baptist of King. I mean, there's all kinds of commandments and teachings of, of the church called the Baptist. In the last few, you know, they hold off what their school taught them. They hold off what their professor taught them. They hold off what their scholarship taught them. Well, what about what the Bible says? What about history? For laying aside the commandments of God. Now, verse 7, verse 8. There are commandments of men and there are commandments of God. Now, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about the commandments of man. If your mom or your dad tell you to clean your room, clean the car, mow the lawn, put your dishes in the sink, do the dishes, sweep the floor, you better obey those commandments. Because they're your authority. If the government tells you to drive 55, the government tells you you owe 10% tax, if the government tells you, and if it doesn't, Afflict, if it doesn't go contrary to the word of God, Paul and Peter say, you obey the commandments of men. We're not, I'm not talking about the religious realm. I'm talking about the government realm. The government called your government and the government called your mom and dad. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the religious you know, you take this wafer and you take this, this this alcoholic drink and it becomes the literal body and little blood of Jesus Christ. You want to show me that in the scriptures? 
You pray to Mary, you get your little beads, and you flip your little bead, and then when we die, we're going to populate outer space, and we're at 144,000, though we got a billion people, and you can't have meat, and you're supposed to meet on Saturday, and, and you know, we get, you know, you throw your baby on the elephant, God, and then you go here and sit cross-legged and goo goo to the moon and whatever kind of nonsense and all that. That's the commandments of religion of man, not God. Pray towards Mecca, climb the mountain, towards, whatever. That's man. That's religion of man. Oh, God said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Well, you know, you got to do this. And, and, and you know, you got to write the candles. And, and then you got to have us show up just before you die. And you got mumble jumble. And you got to go see, You got to go pedal magazine. And you got to go get on your bike. You got to wear your underwear. You got to. Ah, that's. We have a great time of Easter. We have a great time of 4th of July. And we have Christmas. And we have blah, 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 blah. That's man. The commandments of God. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt know that God's before me. Uh, here's one the church doesn't do. There are set feasts. Not holiday. Set feasts. Passover. Unleavened bread. Pentecost. You know, when you talk about church history, you don't talk much about Pentecost. That's when the church started. The church started 100% Jewish. You don't talk about the Feast of Tabernacles, which could be the birthday of Jesus. You don't talk about the Feast of Purim, where you could talk about the Holocaust, and you could talk about how the whole world has been against the Jews. We don't do but those are the commandments of God. I shall build a battlement around, your, around the roof of your house, so if anybody fall from thence... <laughs> You want to look around where you live, see how many people built the battle of me? Thou shalt not wear what pertains to a man. Thou shalt have a woman that pertains to a woman. Okay, very fine. All right, sir, where's your skirt? Where's your purse? Okay. We in the day, the Bible said, you know, shall not print no marks on you for the dead. And you've got Christians walking around with a cross tattooed their arm. Well, that's dead. <laughs> that's death. I mean, you say have got the skull and the, the Christian puts the, the puts the cross. They're both the symbols of death. Curse of the man that hangs on the tree. Curse of be any man that, that touches anything, dead body, anything that, unless they come to the water of purification. It's death. Commandments of men. Okay, it's okay. You, you can be whatever sex you want. You want to be a female and be in a men's locker room? You pervert and all that? You want to take part in sports like that? The government, the commandments of men, the laws of men say, you can do it. Not the commandments of God. Commandments of man. You to be in church on Sunday. The commandments of God. First day of the week. He hold the traditions of men. Again, tradition is, hey, this is how we always done it. You know, the Catholic Church is, is a tradition itself. Going to the Catholic Church is a tradition that mom and dad, grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents, great-great-great-grandparents, great-great-great-great-grandparents, the great-great-great-great-grandparents always went. And it's even for some Baptist principle, going to a Baptist church may not be a means of salvation. It could be, ready? Your mom took you there. Your grandparents took you there. Your great-grandparents took you there. Your great-great-grandparents took you there. Your great-great-grandparents took you there. Your great-great-great. You see, you got the Baptist Catholic. There are traditions in the Baptist church just as much as there are traditions in the Catholic church. They hold no principle in the Bible. Look how they choose the deacons today in the Baptist church. It sure ain't the biblical way. As the washing of pots and cups, though that's in the law, did you know if you had a wooden vessel and it touched something holy, you were to, you were to burn it. 
If you had a clay pot and you touched something holy, you're to break it. But if it was brazen, it was silver or gold by chance, you could wash it. And many other such like things ye do. So there's all kinds of traditions taught by you guys. And there's all kinds of laws of God. <laughs> and he said unto him, Full well ye reject the commandment of God. That's an important one. You reject the law. That's what he's saying. Because the commandment of God is the law. When they brought that woman before Jesus committed adultery, she was caught in the very act. Uh, excuse me. The only way to be caught in the very act is it had to be one of you. How about the rich young ruler? Oh, he was good. No adultery. No stealing. But he had a problem with coveting. How about this Pharisee? Well, all the life of the Pharisee. Oh, you couldn't do that on the Sabbath day. Aren't you doing the same thing? That you may keep your own tradition. So we reject God for tradition of man. That's the Catholic Church. That's the Baptist Church. That's the Church of God. That's science. That's education. That's atheism. That's anything but Christianity. The Bible says, here, here's a good one, ready? The Bible says, the commandment of God, go in all the world and preach the gospel. What's the tradition? What is the commandment of man? Fight him to church. Chapter and verse, please. Mark 16, for go in all the world and preach the gospel. Bring them in. All are welcome. Chapter and verse. Just one. I'll take just one. Oh, you know, the Great Commission in Matthew, which has nothing to do with preaching. It has teaching, but not preaching. See, we don't want to get too preaching. For Moses, all right, here's a, here's, here comes a commandment of God. We dealt with the commandment of man washing hands. And they got all upset because the disciples didn't wash their hands. For Moses said, all right, here's a problem. Honor thy father and mother. Is that not a commandment? That's one of the big ten. That's one of the big ten ones. And whoso curses their father or mother, let him die to death. Now that's in the law. That's later than the Ten Commandments. This is in a list of, you know, if any man kill any man, he's to, he, he's to be put to death. If a woman is found to be with a bee, she put him to death and and then they said, you know, if you curse your father and mother, let him die to death. Boy, aren't you glad they don't do that in America today? But I bet you would solve many of your shootings. The first time a parent tries to correct their child and their child won't listen, well, you don't have to worry about that child no more. They say capital punishment does. Oh, yeah, it deters crime. The moment that, oh, I don't think I'm a male. I'm a female. And I'm a, okay, listen. Pull down your pants. You've got the organs of a male. Oh, I don't believe in that. You've got the organs of a female. I don't believe that. All right, stone them. End of deal. You go into an you go into a doctor's office and and the doctor removes and kills that baby in the womb. All right, you put that doctor and that nurse up to capital punishment with the mother. End of abortion. Well, you know they'll go do it in secret. They'll go do it in the back. You realize how much stuff is done in secret? How much stuff is done in the back alley? So capital punishment, notice how Jesus points out capital punishment offense. 
Washing your hands and your plates on it's not a capital offense. But it ye say, ye say. All right. We did a commandment of God. Here comes a commandment of man. Overriding, loopholing God's commandment. If a man shall say to his father and mother, it is Corbin, that is to say, a gift. Whatsoever thou mightest be profited by, ye shall be free. All right, so mom and dad can't afford to live no more. Maybe dad or mom becomes a widow. They can't handle things. There were no nursing homes or anything like that back then. And they need care. They need medicine. They need, I don't know if they had wheelchairs, whatever kind. They need things. And you say to mom, you say to dad, well, I'm rich. But, you know, I said I'm going to give this money to God in the temple. I can't take care of you. You know, it's, I think Japan, Japan, there's a law. Is it Japan or China? There's a law in Japan and China. You must take care of your parents when they get old. I wonder why we don't have that law here in America. Because I guarantee there's a bunch of Republicans and Democrats who don't want to take care of their parents. And they're filthy rich. You know, you never see anything with these congressmen and all. You never see anything about their parents. Interesting. So, mom, dad, anything I had or anything, I've given it to God in the temple. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father and mother. Ye suffer. The, 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 the religious, the Pharisees, the scribes, and the, and the Sadducees, and the elders say, yeah, your, your child's free. He, he's given to the temple. When their mom, when the parents bring it to court and about their child, yeah, the sounds here in the books, that he's giving that money to us. To God. Excuse me, God. Give it to God. Us. Uh, he get God. Holy, holy, full of baloney. So they make a ruling, verse 12, the commandment of man, your son is free, he can't take care of you no more. Making the word of God, look at that, making the word of God, the law is the word of God. Versus the traditions of man. And if your church has traditions of man that can't be found in the word of God, making the word of God of none effect. Through your tradition. So the commandment of man overrides the commandment of God and Jesus says, in that case, which I hate to be in your shoes, the word of God has no value. And you wonder why churches have perverted modern versions of the Bible. Because I know a preacher, oh, you're never going to get rid of me. I'm going to be here. And, how... and within a couple months after saying that, he's in an RV packed up and Retired. Hmm. Can you find retirement in the Bible? Oh, yes, you can. When the priest or the Levite, I believe it's age 60, I'm not sure, or 40. There is an age. They were allowed to retire from the service. Oh, we're... We're the church. We're not under the law. What are you doing retiring? Retiring's under the law, not under grace. May, and, uh, whichever you have delivered, and making such like things do ye. 
And what would happen is this case that Jesus gave it is your, your parents grew too old. You're rich. You, you tell the Pharisees, listen, I'll give this money. I'm giving it to the Lord, Loni, in the temple. And then when, when it comes to be your parents have died or someone else to take care of them, they will charge you and they will give you back your money minus what they take. So it becomes profitable to the child and profitable to the religion. And you know God didn't get nothing out of it. And I guarantee there are means and ways to happen like that today. I mean, there are causes like for a marriage. You know, you don't want your, if, if there's a divorce, you don't want, you, you get that prenuptial. <laughs> well, you know, I give you money, but you know, you signed this paperwork. Yeah. And when he had called the people unto him, the Jews, he said unto him, hearken unto me, Jesus, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man, that means outside of man that enters into him that can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those that defile him, the man. All right. You wash with dirty hands, that don't defile you. You got mud on your shoes, that don't defile you. Your hair is all messy. That don't defile you. You're not wearing a tie. That don't defile you. But what comes out of you defiles a man. Uh-oh. So now we got things from the outside and we got things from the inside of man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And that's it. Period. He walks away. Remember, he's talking to a bunch of people who don't want to hear him anyway. They don't. They just want a, a, a medical show. They want healing and to feel good, but they don't want the truth. And when he was entered into a house from the people, the people's gone, his disciple asked him concerning the parable. And he said to them, are ye without understanding also? Do you not perceive? Do you not understand? Don't you get it? That whatsoever thing from without, there's that thing without, enters into a man, it cannot defile him. Now, we're not talking about death. I mean, all right, you take cyanide, you take cyanide, you're going to die. And even under the law, if you if you commit suicide, Samson is in the heroes of faith. So we're not talking about your soul. We're into another realm. Because it enters not into his heart. Okay? So anything that you eat, whether dirty hands or or you know a fly pooped on it, it doesn't go into your heart. But into the belly. And go with that for draw Persian all me. Now, do you realize that talk about, I mean, this is bread and, and meat and all that and vegetable. But do you realize the meat that they bought on the streets? <laughs> you know, flies were on it. <laughs> and he said, That which cometh out of man defiles the man. You know, there's a case in the law that if a man were to poop on the ground in the land of Israel, he's to take the paddle of his weapon, he's to bury it, because if God come walking in the camp, God don't want to see that on the ground. God may turn around and leave. <laughs> that comes out of a man. You cover your poop. But we're even going to get even more than that. That's physical. That's what cometh out of man that defiles him. Well, what are we talking about here? 
For within, inside the man, out of the heart of man. You know, let your heart follow you. The heart is deceitful beyond and wicked, Jeremiah says. Don't let your heart follow you. Because look at this. For out of the heart of man perceiveth evil thought. You got a problem with thoughts? The psychiatrist can't help you if he's dealing with your head because it's your heart. What's wrong with everybody shooting everybody? It's a heart issue. It's not a gun issue. Though guns do kill. It's a heart issue. You got to find out what's going on with the heart. What is going into that heart? Violence movies, violence video games, violence, violence, violence everywhere, violence, violence. And you're you're a monkey, and you get in the monkey tree, and you take the banana, and you take a stick, and you kill the fellow monkey because that banana is yours. That's what they're teaching in school. And you get on your prayer mat in California, you pray towards Mecca, and if you don't believe in the Mecca guy, and then you just take a sword and cut off their head. That's what's being taught in school. And if you won't give to Mother Church and you won't be uh, excelled to the Pope and all that, what do we do to the Bible believing Christians? We kill them. That's what's being taught in school. And if you have a lustful man, you, you just go after a lustful man and then you pick a gun to fight yourself as you move from the trail to Utah. That's what's being taught in school. Evil thoughts. You got a problem with the evil thoughts? It ain't your head. It's your heart. Adulteries. Not the penis. It's your heart. You get the wrong body organ. What's wrong with Hollywood with adulteries and fornications? It's a heart with murders. Adulteries, fornication, murders, and thefts. Make big bucks for movies and television shows. You make movies all about movies with clean Christian life and no problems, no murders, no adulteries, no fornication, no theft, no bad words. You ain't going to sell. Beer light won't put your face on their cans. Won't make money. The brother or the son of the of a past president won't stand up and say, Who, what's the big deal? Got murder problems? You got a murder population, the jail problem. What's the problem? Bring in the bring in the religion. Bring in the shrinks. Bring in the counselors. We can correct. Now, if you're not dealing with the heart, you can't. There's only one way going to correct all that stuff. You bring in Jesus Christ, that He cleanses the heart. They will proclaim their guiltiness. They will receive a pardon. They will be cleansed of their heart of their sin. As a newborn creature in God, in the Holy Spirit, adopted children, rightfully, not just say a sinner's prayer, that will clean. Because Jesus doesn't save the brain, he saves the heart. But even that, a Christian will have problems with his heart. Because covetousness. Oh, see, no, I'm not supposed to be watching television, but it's a ball game. They're throwing a ball. Oh, commercial, come on. Oh, I wish I could have that cheesecake. Oh, that's such a good cheese. Oh, yummy, that candy bar. Oh, oh, look, they have a breakfast sandwich. Oh, oh. I work for a breakfast donut place. I work third shift. You know, but people would come at 2 o'clock in the morning and say, I want that I just saw on the television. Two o'clock in the morning. I mean, they're, they got their bathrobes on. I'm assuming they're driving with their slippers. That's covetousness. When you run to the store and say, I saw that. My neighbor has that. That's covetous. When you say, oh, I, I, I love my neighbor's wife. Woohoo! That's covetousness. Paul says covetousness. Romans 7, I believe it, says it's lust. You got lust? 
Not a heart issue. I mean, it's a heart issue, not a head issue. Wickedness comes from heart. Deceit comes from the heart. You got a pastor, you got a priest, you got a church that's deceiving you, it comes from the heart. Lischievousness, that's just evil, wicked living. An evil eye. <laughs> They're looking at you like, what can I get from you? With a, if any man, uh, uh, Matthew 5, 28, any man look upon a woman lust after his heart. His heart. It's already committed adultery. No, adultery. Look at heart and evil. Look at heart. Blasphemy. That's exactly what they're doing. Jesus has said, your heart. Oh, they, they, they wash with unclean hands. That's a thought. The heart. They're deceiving the people of Israel. Heart. And they weren't clean livers. Pride. There's America. Heart. The heart of, uh, of America ain't Chevrolet. It's the heart of sin, wickedness, foolishness. What's foolishness? It's in the heart. What is it? I don't know what sex I am. I don't know who I'm supposed to have sex with. I didn't know if I pulled this trigger and it would fire boots and kill people. After all, I'm the 1,000th million person that's shot people up in a grocery store or something. You know what the problem with the youth today? Is they got a heart issue, not head. Don't give them medication for their brain. Don't have the red pill for their brain and the blue pill for their, their fears and anxiety. Don't give them the yellow pill because it's R-E-D and E-P and Q-U-D and money, money, money. Deal with the heart. And the biggest thing when it comes to children, it's the heart and the rear end. Take that rod of correction, beat the rear, the rear end, and you'll deal with the heart. That's why it's called child rearing. There's no child rearing today. It's illegal. Heart issue. All these evil things. Well, how much is promoted on the media? How much is promoted on the television? How much of it do you see in the movies? How much do you see it in your glory magazine? How much do you see it in the magazine? How much of it do you see on the newsstand? How much do you see it on the podcast? How much do you see it on the radio? How much do you see? How much do you hear? How much in America? How much out of the pulpits of America? Recently, last year, I think it was, it was a pastor, you know, take a 16-year-old on the floor of his office, fornicating, while he's married, adultery. Don't tell me it's brain. All these evil things. All, don't, you know, America calls it good. America loves the adultery. America loves the fornicating. Listen, listen, listen. The newspapers and the media praise. Will somebody go out there and shoot somebody? Because it sells magazines. It sells the newspaper. And then when the hurricane's gone, may somebody go do something so we can have another news story because the hurricane's getting old news. Maybe somebody go do something so we can sell more newspapers. You know, they never follow up. We had a death of a man die in the backyard of one of our houses right here down the street. Well, nothing. Didn't hear anything about it. It was a suspicious kind of death at a nursing home. Where is it? Well, that right there wouldn't make no money. That, that parking garage will be on the front page of tomorrow's newspaper. Unto something more evil that we can sell. We can sell. How many? How many? How many? How many newspapers out there say this church? Two people got honestly saved and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Their name was written on heaven. How many? How many religious papers? How many?
oh, scholar somebody and doctor such and such. And, you know, quoting from a perverted Bible. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. How many? All these evil things come from within your heart. They defile me. Don't worry about washing your hands when you got evil thoughts. Don't worry about, is there something on your tie if you're involved in adultery? Don't worry about, you got a rip in your stocking if you're in fornication. Oh, I got a little hole in my jean and you murdered somebody. Your nails are not clean when you've stolen. You got a little smudge on my face and you're involved in covetousness. Oh, look, look at that woman. Look what she's wearing. You sit in a church. You sit in a pew. Look what she's wearing. And look what sins you're involved in. You see that? They only put a dollar in the play. You know how much? And, and you got deceit. All week long at the job, you were doing a job that deceived others. Yeah, don't be a Pharisee warrior about, oh, you're not washing your hands. If you got this list on uncleanness. You see the list that Jesus just gave? You know, washing hands may be unclean for the commandments of man. But what about the commandments of God? Look at the first Ten Commandments. Memorize the first Ten Commandments. Have you broken those? Oh, you know how the Baptist church gets away with it? Well, you know, we're not under the Sabbath. Yeah, I know. We're on the first day of the week, not Sunday. You give yourself a, a rest at least once a week for God. 